Hi everyone, this is HMNS video number 18 and you are most welcome for it. Today we want to see some part of data analysis called filtering data in Excel. We want to see how we can filter our data in Microsoft Excel. We shall also see how we can differentiate filtering data from hiding data and then we shall see what is called a wildcard in Excel. So let's switch on to it and we see how we can filter data in Excel. We have this table showing HF company's workers' salary and we want to use it to see how we can filter data in Excel. Now, as I've told you, filtering data is part of data analysis. And when you are doing any form of data analysis in Excel, you need to make sure that your data is a proper data set, as I've told you when we are starting to do sorting in Excel. Now, what defines a proper data set? First of all, you need to make sure that you don't have any empty column or empty row within your data set. Like for example, if I highlight row five, Alt I R, that is the keyboard shortcut for inserting rows. And then I insert a row within my table like this one. It breaks the data set into two and it makes that analysis very difficult. So you need to make sure your data set is a proper data set. So that is the first condition that I'm going to control Z to undo that. Then secondly, you need to make sure that your table is having header. Like for our case, we have the name, department, and salary. This is our table header. And for Excel to recognize that that one is your table header, you need to give it some formatting that is different from some other records within your table. Like for our case, we have bolded it. And then finally, and very important one, you need to make sure that all around your table is filled with empty cells. Or you can have row headers, like this one is touching the row header or column header. That one is okay. So if all those conditions have been met, your data is now a proper data set. You can now do that analysis very well using that data set. So now let's start filtering. Now when you're filtering your data, avoid highlighting your data set like this. If you are very sure you can highlight the entire data set like the way we have done it, this one, this is a small data set, then it's fine and it's good. You can highlight it. But once your data set is a proper data set, you simply need to click on a single cell within your data set and then you start doing your data analysis. Now, to apply filter in our data, there are actually very many ways you can do that. First of all, you can come to the Home tab, and when you come to Editing Group, there is Sort and Filter command here. When you click, you have Filter here. So when you click on the filter, you can see that the filter drop-downs have been put in all the columns within our data set. So this filter drop-downs is what shows that you have applied filter in that data set. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. You can also come to data and then in the sort and filter group, there is also a filter button here. When you click, it also applies for you the filter drop downs. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Now, when you hover over to the filter button, you see the keyboard shortcut control shift L as you can see there. That one is the keyboard shortcut for filtering your data. So when you click on a single cell within your data set, and then you hit Control shift l it automatically applies for you the filter drop downs i'm going to Control z you can also use old a t that one is also another keyboard shortcut for applying filter in your data set i'm going to Control z to undo that those are the two keyboard shortcuts that you can use to filter your data most of the time we are going to be using keyboard shortcuts let's click on a single cell within our data set and then we start filtering Control shift l to apply the filter drop downs now, once you have already applied the filter drop-downs like this, and then you click on that drop-down button, it gives you the unique list of all records that is in that column. I'm going to click Cancel. Again, when you come to the Department column, and then you click on the filter drop-down, you can see that it's giving us a unique list of departments that is in that column. So I'm going to cancel it again. Like, for example, if I want to see all the records for the workers, from statistics department. I can simply come to the department column and then I click on the filter drop down. Right now, you can see all of them is ticked. It's having this checkbox where you can tick and untick. Now, for example, right now, everything is ticked. That's why in the select all, it is also ticked. But when I come and uncheck, like for example, sales department, you can see that it's no longer taking it, but it's giving you that black square. For our case, we want to see only this one in the statistics department. First of all, let me first tick this one back. So what you need to do first, you need to first come and unselect all and everything will not be selected. 
and then you select the one you want like for our case we want statistics so you click on statistics and then you click OK. Now once you do that you can see that our table now is showing only the records for those one in the Department of Statistics. When you filter your data it doesn't delete the data it simply hide those data. Now what shows that you have filtered your data? There are actually a number of ways you can see that you have filtered your data. First of all when you checked on the raw headers within the range where the table is sitting you can see that some rows are missing. For example from row 3, you can see that row 4 is not there, it went to row 5. And then row 6 is also missing, it went to row 7. Row 8 is also missing, just like that. And then not only that, you can see that our row headers in the rows where the tables are sitting is blue in color. Also when you come to the column where we have filtered, like for our case it is the department column, then you see in the drop down, there is that filter button which has already been put there. It resembles this button here. That is the filter button. That one is also what shows that you have filtered that column. When you see these other columns, it's only showing the drop down button. Like for example, our names, you can see there's only the drop down button. And here there's also only the drop down button. If you want to unfilter your data, you need to simply come to the data tab. Then in the sort and filter group, you can come to clear filter. When you click clear filter, it is automatically clear for you the filter you have applied there. And then you can also go ahead and then click on the department and select all. Then maybe select sales and statistics. We want to show all the records for the department of sales and statistics. So when you select the two, you click OK. You can see that we have the records for statistics and sales department only. If you completely want to even remove the filter button, it's very simple. You simply need to come to the data tab, the sort and filter group. Then you click on the filter button this filter button here, you click and it clears for you even the filter button that was applied on that table. That's how you can filter your data in Excel and how you can also clear the filters. So now we want to see how the Excel functions work within the filtered data. Before we filter our data again, let's come down here and then we sum up all the sellers. So let's come to the total here, and then we do equals to sum, you're going to use the sum function. Tab to select it. Then I'm going to highlight all these salaries. When I click tab, tab, you can see that the total amount of salary is 14,500,000. Let's also count how many workers are listed here. Equals to, we're going to also use the count function, tab to select it, highlighting the same range. When I click enter, now you can see that we have a total of 12 records in that table. Now let's filter our data. And then we try to sum it after filtering. Then we see what happens. Click on a single cell, Control Shift L. Then you come to the department column. Click on the filter drop down and select all. And then select all the statistics. And then you click OK. Now our data has now been filtered. Click on cell C19 equals to sum. Tab to select it. I'm going to highlight this entire range here. Tab, tab. It's giving us two different answers. Let's also count and we see what happens. Tab to select it. Highlight. Enter. There's also some problem there. Now let's find out why we are getting two different answers when we do this. First of all, let's come to the cell where we have submit before filtering. Then hit the F2 key to put it in edit mode. We can see that we are getting a sum of C4 up to C15. Tab, tab. F2, it's also counting from cell C4 up to cell C15. What about after filtering? Let's click, and then I'm going to hit F2. You can see that this time around, it is summing from cell C5 up to C15. Remember here, it was summing from cell C4 up to C15. Now this one is C5 up to C15. That means there is some cell which has not been summed. Yeah, that is C4. You can see that it's summing from C5 up to C15. But within that range, if you see very well, we do not have cell C6. It's hidden and even cells C10, C11, it's also not there. But it's going up to C15. Now the reason why this one is capturing those hidden one, but it's not capturing C4, is because the range we are highlighting here, it's starting from C5. So we can no longer highlight C4. So we can only start highlighting from C5 
and then the cells within C5 up to C15. Whether it's hidden, we can highlight it. But for C4, we cannot now click on it and highlight it because it's hidden before C5. The same applies to the count function here. This one is counting 11. That means it's leaving cell C4 also. Now, let's do this. Let's highlight the range which has already been filtered. And then control C. I'm going to click on cell H17. Then control V to paste it there. Now one thing we can discover is that when you copy the filtered range, it only copied the visible cells. It doesn't copy the invisible cells. That's why when you come here and then you do equals to sum, tab to select it. Then you highlight this range. Hit tab. You can see that we are getting only 6 million. 900,000. The same applies to the count function. When you do count, tap, we are counting this range, enter, you can see that we are counting six, only this one there. There might be some situation where you may not be in need of copying your data and pasting it somewhere, but you only want to work with visible cells only. Now there is an Excel function that you can use that will only work on the visible cells only. I'm going to click on cell D19 and the function is called the subtotal. So you do equals to subtotal. You see it highlighted in blue. You hit tab. Now the subtotal function has two arguments. The function number and then the reference. And then in the function number, the subtotal function has all the statistical function that has been built in it. So you simply need to put there the number corresponding to the function you want to work on. And then everything will be done. Like for our case, we want a sum function. The sum function is given number nine. So you simply come and double click number nine or sum function and it will automatically put for you number nine there. Then you put comma and then in the reference you highlight the range where you want to sum. When you close parentheses and hit tab, you can see that this time around we are getting exactly 6,900,000 which is corresponding to the amount we got when we copied only the visible cells and then we sum it. That means the sum function is only working on the visible cells. Also, when you come here, then you do equals to subtotal tab. Count is number two. When you see it highlighted in blue, you hit tab or you simply use two comma. You highlight the range. When you hit enter, you can see that it's getting six because the visible cells here, they are six. Now, one thing I want to show you is that I want to come here and then highlight this rows, which is having departments that are not statistics, I want to remain with only the statistics department. I'm going to right click on the row header, then I come and do hide. This time around, I've hidden this rows. I've not filtered it, I've just hidden it. As you can see right now, it's just exactly like this one that we have filtered. But this time around, you can see that however much the rows are missing, the row header is not blue in color, like the one up here. That is the difference between filtering and hiding. Now I've gone ahead to do the same thing we have done up here on this table here on the hidden data. So when you come to the sum functions, you get the same results. When you use the subtotal function, you get exactly the results for only the visible cells. When you count it, you're getting the count of 11. But when you use the subtotal function, you also see that you get only the count for the visible cells. So now I want to see also what's called a text filter and also a number filter. I'm going to click also on a single cell within my data set. Control Shift L to filter it. Now when you come to the column which is having text like five workers, we have the name column here, these are text. Then you come to the filter drop down. You click on it. There's also what is called a text filter as you can see. When you hover over to it, it gives you all these options here. When you come to the column that are having numbers, then you click on the filter drop down. You also have number filter. So Excel is wise enough to detect that these are numbers, then it gives you the number filters. So within the number filter, you also have all these options here. So now let's see. When you come to the name column, then you come to the text filter. Then I want to come to begin with. It opens for you the custom auto filter dialog box. It's saying show rows where name, which is this name here, begins with. Then I'm going to come to this box here, C. And when you click OK, you can see that we have only two workers 
whose name begin with C. So I'm going to read Control Shift L to remove the filter, then Control Shift L again to apply the filter. You can do something like Control Shift L L to remove it and then apply it again. Now you can as well apply the filters on multiple columns. Like for our case, you can come to the department column, you click on the filter drop down, then you unselect all. I want to see all the records for the sale department and then statistics department. When you click OK, then again you can come to the salary column, you click on the filter drop down, come to number filters, then you come to greater than, and you can say greater than 1 million. Then you click OK, only statistics and sale department greater than 1 million and that is exactly what we have filtered out so i'm going to control shift l l now the text filter and the number filters i'm going to leave you to explore the rest but there's one thing i also want to show you from here when you come to the filter drop down you can also see we have a search box here so you can simply click on it if there are very many then you start searching statistics you click ok so you can as well search it control shift L, L. You can as well use the custom auto filter to search using a wildcard. Let's see. So I'm going to come to the name column, click, come to the text filter, and then you come to custom filter. When you click, it has selected for us equals to. By the way, you can also come here, click, and then you change from here to anyone you want. But I want to leave it as equals to. You can do something like this. You put there asterisk and then C, and then asterisk. Now what this wildcard means, everything before C, you can put it there, then everything after C, you can put it there. So this is like telling Excel that you show for me every names that is having letter C in it. So whether the letter C is coming before, or it's coming after, or it's in the middle, you show it. That is what that wildcard is meaning. There are actually a lot to do with wildcard that I'm not going to talk much about it in this video. But we shall get a specific video. Maybe we shall just talk about wildcards. But that's what that wildcard means. So when you click OK, you can see that it has given us names that is containing the letter C. I'm going to Control Shift L L. I just wanted to show you that you can as well filter using wildcards in Excel. Now I've gone ahead to also apply some cell colors and phone colors to some records here. I want to show you how you can filter by cell color, cell values, phone color, and then icons. If you want to filter by cell values, you simply need to go to the cell that's serving that value. For example, if you want to filter by sales, you can come to a cell that is serving sales, like cell B67, then you right click, come to filter, then you come to filter by selected sales value. When you click, you can see that it has filtered only sales. Control Shift L L. You can as well filter by cell color. You go to a cell that is serving the color you want. Like for example, we want to filter by this green color. So I'm going to click on cell C72. Right click. Come to filter. You come to filter by selected sales color. You click. You can see that it's only showing us values that is serving the cell color of green. Control Shift L L. You can also do the same to the phone color. Go to a cell that is having the phone color you want. Like for example, this one here. Right click. Come to filter. You come to the third option here. Filter by selected cells phone color. When you click, you can see that we are having only the records that is having the phone color that we know. Control Shift L L. Now let's also filter by icons. So I'm going to scroll down here. I've also gone ahead to put some icons basing on these rules here. So when you click on a cell that is having the icon you want, like for our case, let's click on a cell that is having this cross or this X. Then you right click, come to filter. Then you come down to filter by selected cells icon. When you click, you can see that it's only showing us records that is having that cross. So I'm going to control shift L to unfilter that. So that is how you can filter by cell color, cell value, phone color, and then the cells icon. So that is it about filtering data in Excel. Please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you found this video interesting, give it a like and share it with your friends. Until next video, HMNS video number 19. 
and then we meet again thank you